hello guys uh, welcome to the new section in this section we are going to assemble the parts which we have created earlier in the previous section uh, totally we have created nine parts we are going to assemble those nine parts uh, one by one such that it forms a complete uh, working model right for that uh, click on that new icon to open an assembly file click assembly and uh, let the subtype be the design and uh, don't make any changes uh, unselect the default template and uh, same click on the mmns uh, assembly design right uh, mmns assembly design and execute it all uh, right this is the uh, assembly window okay this is where we are going to assemble our uh, parts first uh, uh, we shall follow uh, 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 we shall first assemble part by part for that we need to uh, export uh, the individual parts and uh, move over it to the current uh, working window in order to export those individual parts uh, click on the assemble uh, option available here it would open the current uh, working directory in that the nine parts which we have uh, created earlier has been uh, uh, displayed mm, in that uh, if you have confused over the names and the parts you can generate a preview of it before opening for that to click on the preview uh, pre preview uh, image box would open indicating the corresponding image that is present under the selected part right uh, under this uh, section we are going to assemble first the base plate since the base plate acts as the fixed component here upon which all the individual parts would be modeled we are first uh, exporting that base plate right so first uh, click on the part 9 which is the base plate and uh, open it the part has been uh, opened right in that in the assembly uh, basically we need to provide a certain constraints for the assemblies because the constraints in the sense the it it establishes the relationship between individual parts and uh, assembled parts that is uh, if two parts are being uh, assembled together we need to uh, provide the constraint for each of the two parts the those constraints would act as the uh, uh, reference and would act as the uh, some set of rules which define how does the particular object may work if for example if we are creating some connecting rod what, what would the connecting rod do the connecting rod would uh, uh, either produce a rotary motion or a reciprocity motion so, so uh, a pin joint would uh, provide both rotary and the linear motion okay uh, basically the, so we can uh, provide the pin joint constraint for the uh, connecting rods similarly this plate this plate uh, it doesn't it, it should not allow any uh, motion it, it uh, the degree of freedom should be completely nullified such that uh, it doesn't move because uh, upon this only we are going to place all our uh, components right then it should provide certain firm should restrict all of the motions uh, possible right for that uh, the constraint uh, in such a case the constraint which is desired is uh, that we can give the constraint for the second uh, drop down box uh, this is a component reference uh, under this uh, we can have uh, many options available under that we can give the fixed one we can give the fix option okay uh, now once the body has been uh, you can all see the all the status fully constrained we should provide the necessary constraint until the status becomes fully constrained unless otherwise the object has been fully constrained the object won't turn into that orange color right so we must uh, provide the certain necessary constraints in order to restrict the motion or in order to define the motion 
in all the possible degree of freedoms basically there are six degree of freedoms for a free object so we so we need to provide a certain constraints in order to nullify or in order to define the motion under those uh, degrees of freedom right now in this case uh, uh, status has been fully constrained so accepted by uh, enabling the tick mark now uh, we have assembled the first part now second part uh, we shall have first have a overlook of the final product now uh, see the final one uh, we have uh, modeled the base plate now we, uh, we shall model the this part okay the second part for that we shall uh, drag and drop that one uh, i think we have modeled the gave the name as two oh sorry you gave the name as one in such a case the preview helps a lot uh, see this is the second part which we need to export or in order to uh, drag it to the window open now it is uh, opened now uh, we can see the orientation is somewhat different we, we can use these uh, options to in order to rotate or in order to move those objects this is uh, rotating pins uh, totally six rotating objects are available in uh, two rotated over the 360 degree and three x three arrow marks indicate the motion towards the uh, three respective axes so it is uh, somewhat in the lying condition so lift it over and place it uh, by facing us so rotate it now it looks somewhat uh, okay right now uh, we need to give the uh, we need to place this object over the base plate over the center of the base plate right so uh, in order to place it over the center we can get the help of the axis so first uh, the, uh, the center plane of the base plate as well as the center plane of that uh, our uh, new component uh, should be co-planar uh, clock planar in the sense which, uh, both should lie in the same plane so in order to uh, make it happen select those two planes center plane of the plate right and now the center plane of the new component okay once we have uh, selected it uh, the software asks for the distance uh the distance should be zero because those two sh uh, should act uh, those should, should lie upon each other so enter the distance zero and plus enter now you can see that uh, the object has been uh, laid exactly on each other uh, but uh, you can see that the status is still partially constrained you can see that uh, the arrow mark or this side has become uh, uh, absolute okay we can't change that which indicates that that direction has been totally constrained now uh, we need to constrain uh, still the green color and the blue color are visible which indicates that those two directions are still not constrained so we need to produce the constraint over the respective two axis once we done so uh, this object would become totally constrained now uh, we can also see that the uh, uh, this respective uh, plane as well as the similar uh, corresponding plane or the new object should lie exactly at, uh, upon each other such that this object would uh, remain under the uh, as, uh, would remain exactly as at the center of the base plate to achieve so uh, select the respective two axis okay now see the uh, type I have uh, modified to the coincident which indicates that those two lie upon the same axis there's no distance between those two okay now see the blue axis has been uh, has become absolute only the upside down is upside only its x okay uh, we can select that by giving first we shall uh, track it okay uh, we uh, we want uh, this object to be lying on the base plate so uh, if uh, if an object lies upon a plate then there should not be any distance available okay 
so we can give the distances we can make the distances zero such that it uh, becomes uh, completely fixed over the base plate for that you select the base of the object and as well as the base of the plate and now as usual the, it became coincident such that the distance becomes a zero now you can see that the object has been placed at the center of the plate as well as the object has been turned into orange color which indicates the status as fully constrained right oh, we can accept it now uh, totally we have uh, uh, set up uh, two components now we, uh, we shall see how we can modify the third one right uh, in this case uh, we have modified this one uh, we have finished the second one also now uh, what I think is we can provide the third one this third object right uh, uh, now we shall uh, export the third component uh, so this one uh, okay the preview confirms it right uh we shall make it a proper orientation okay uh, if you see that if we have seen the simulation of the beam engine uh, this uh, new component it uh, provides as a bridge over the um, rotary motion as well as the reciprocating action of the piston so uh, these two previous components uh, those components only act as the base base structure they these two objects doesn't participate in any kind of motion but uh, the component which we have exported now it uh, performs some operation it it has uh, it does some motion so whenever an object object does motion we need to specify that constraint over there right for this uh, for this motion uh, it, it performs an object uh, it performs a motion which are, which is similar to a pin joint right so we need to uh, specify that uh, this object performs this object would perform a, an uh, operation which, which is uh, similar to that of the pin joint right so what uh, it does is we need to specify the pin joint especially see in the second object we have specified we have provided a hole over this hole the uh, the new particle the, uh, the new objects uh, uh, this respective uh, cylinder would be uh, rested over there right so this point this object acts as the uh, pin joint right so for that you go to the user defined constraint and open the drop down list for this we can find a length of uh, objects of length of options available for the, uh, uh, under the under those uh, objects as uh, so you select the pin joint and as uh, so being a circular cylinder in the circular wall these objects uh, by default have the center line for them so select those center lines and select the center line of the hole over here right now we can see that uh, these two particles these are uh, to be exact these two parts are uh, and completely nullified okay hmm. now we shall uh, select the uh, uh, now the task is to place this uh, third component exactly under the gap of the second one right hmm. for that you select the base uh, end surface of the cylinder and you select the end surface of the object and uh, automatically take it has taken as coincident and uh, specify the dimension as a zero now we can see that the connection definition is complete and the object has turned into orange color once it is finished you can press the tick mark now see it has uh, performed well in order to specify in order to check whether the uh, assembly is correct or not you can check over it uh, there is an option called drag components under drag component press that uh, we have specified a pin joint for the uh, third one so select the third one and you just uh, drag you just move the mouse you can see that uh, operation is correct and the uh, object is uh, uh, perfectly constrained and uh, it, uh, it resembles our uh, uh, necessity right uh, again we make a mouse click and close it right hmm. 
uh, after now we have assembled uh, three parts the remaining parts would be discussed uh, uh, the remaining parts would be discussed in the upcoming lectures right uh, take care bye